Hello everyone, welcome to Project Model UN, India's number one resource for Model United Nations. I am very excited to have with us our guest for today, who is Ms. Sudeshna Chatterjee, who is the principal at Jamnabai Narsi School in Mumbai. Jamnabai Narsi School is a school that hosts a very important conference in Mumbai, which is the International Youth Conference, where students simulate the G8 and the G20, and I'm really excited to hear from Ms. Sudeshna to, about what it is and why it's so special. So Ms. Sudeshna, thank you for being on the program and welcome to the program. My pleasure. Um, so just to, to get started, um, can you please tell us, for those parents or students who are not very familiar with Jabnabai Narsi School, can you tell us about the school's philosophy? Well, our school was started... Uh in 1971, the philosophy of the school was based around the fact that uh, knowledge, as it was understood and is still understood by us, is strength supreme. That became the motto of our school. We have always been nurtured with the philosophy that the child is at the center of all educational planning, academic and non-academic planning. And for the last four decades now, we've taken education beyond the realms of just schooling mm. to something much more than that. Very interesting. So I'd like to um, de deconstruct some of what you said, because you've said some really interesting things. First of all, you said what the motto of the school is, which is knowledge is strength supreme. So I want to dig a little bit yes. into that. You also said that you focus on placing the child at the center of everything that you do, your policies and your programming. So Absolutely. I also want to ask you a little bit about that. And the third thing which you said, which I found really interesting, is you said that you're focusing on preparation for life rather than preparation right. for, for passing Absolutely. an exam. Yeah, and that's, that's mm -hmm. a very deliberate strategy in all that we do in our school, which does not limit itself to just... Uh, making them academic, uh, you know, geniuses, but takes them into life with all the confidence that today's kid needs. Mm. So I, that I wanna, entire preparation. Mm -hmm. I want to dig a little bit into this. When you say preparation for life, and that you've made a deliberate choice, it sounds like this is standing in opposition to what other schools are doing. So what what is the what would the opposite of this look like? And why is it so important to focus on preparation for life? What, what does that mean exactly? I think if you go by the traditional definition of what a child must get out of school, it has always been, at least in this country, uh, you know, very sound erudition and knowledge of every discipline that one has to master. The content mastery was given a lot of importance. Mm. Now, over the years, so much of success has come into the school as far as academic results are concerned. Mm -hmm. The children have been topping year after year. That the you know the, the fascination with topping the board examinations <laughs> has really taken a little less priority to what this child, given a set of opportunities other than just topping the board examination, mm -hmm. could do with his life. And which are those skills that he will take with him into the future? Mm. We say often, we tell parents that, you know, exactly what percentage your child got in the board examination will be applauded for a few days and then forgotten. Mm -hmm. But what we will remember is what else he contributed to the community of school and beyond that. And what is the impression that he has left behind for all the things that he did outside the classroom rather than just in the classroom? Those experiences are what we lay a lot of significance to. And we've proved ourselves, you know, right every time uh, with, uh, with this trust in our kids that they will manage both beautifully well. And they do. I love that. Okay, so what I'm hearing you say, and it's really interesting, is a focus on what the child, can, the student can do for its, for its community and what it can do outside of the classroom, what he or she can do outside of the classroom. So, Absolutely. for example, involvement in community service or involvement in extracurricular activities, is that, 
Is that some Absolutely, of what you mean? Absolutely, yes. Fantastic. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and uh, sports and uh, some sports. activities. Sports, so, culture. So uh, what we have been, uh, you know, what has been proved, this belief that we have that a child who is involved in all these things actually comes out a much richer individual than one who has just uh, content mastery has been proved true so many times over that now it has become the very, uh, you know, underlying foundation of all that we uh, speak to our parents or inspire mm. our children with because of the past examples that we have. I'm curious, Ms. Sudeshna, when you, how receptive are parents to this idea? Are they, is it something that they instinctively get? Or is that something where you're still facing some kind of resistance where maybe parents say, okay, yeah, yeah, maybe what you're saying is right, but I want to focus on, on the boards or I want academic mastery. What has been your experience? I think, I think Karen, uh, parents uh, for a long time have been choosing this school mm -hmm. because of its culture, because mm -hmm. of what it stands for. Uh, results at a certain point, as I said, there is a standardization and there are very, very good schools by way of simply academic performance. Mm -hmm. But why do uh, parents choose Jamna by Narsi school? Mm -hmm. There must be a reason for that, you know, that enthusiasm to put their children here stems from this, that our children end up doing a lot more, mm -hmm. contributing a lot more of their talent blossoming and finding what's really good in each one of themselves before they are done with their 15 years of school. Mm. And each one finds their place. I love so that. That, uh, that, I think, is uh, something, uh, our report card, which is uh, really more than uh, how well we just uh, help them master the content of the books. Absolutely. And I saw that, actually, in another part of your website when you said that you focus on learning to learn and not to memorize facts. So uh, now, now I, I understand sure. that a little better. So right. my, just the final thing I want to ask you about this question about what Jamna by Narsi School stands for is you said that you place the child at the center of your policies and your programs. Yes. And you said that this is right. a deliberate choice. Can you give us an example of what this looks like and what it means exactly? Uh, I'd like to start uh, when, uh, you know, the kids are really very young. Mm -hmm. I think that becomes the foundation of all their later learning. Mm -hmm. We uh, put the child in the center of the web mm -hmm. and think of all the milestones that are expected between ages 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 and then onwards. Mm -hmm. And we web each of the developments that would be required, this is, uh, I'm talking with reference to curriculum development in this school. Mm -hmm. We would web what the milestones as far as language learning would be concerned, mm -hmm. numeracy would be concerned, uh, science and technology would be concerned, physical development would be concerned, mm -hmm. their interest in the arts as well as their personality and social development. Mm. In older children, we would web one more, and that is called citizenship. Mm, interesting. How far are our children proficient in being good citizens? Are they proving to be good citizens within their own school community? Mm. This is a web way we web our entire curriculum, and from there, we decide what science we would like to do that comes back to a child's real integrated learning about himself and his environment. Really interesting. Okay, so what you're so saying... The, yes. Yeah. So the child's interest, the child's milestones, the child development in age becomes the center of our entire process of planning and curriculum development. That's just one example of what I mean by a child-centric policy. Okay, that that is really fascinating. And I, the one thing that stood out to me is with the thing you mentioned about citizenship and I'm interested in it because a lot of schools now getting a little bit into model United Nations they participate in model UN because they want to build global citizens 
And there's an idea yeah. that this activity will help develop that. 